Now I want to take a look at Illustrator's 3D Revolve command. Now this guy is pretty awesome. So I'm going to move over to the right of my screen here so I have some space. And yet again, what I will do is start with some simple paths. Before I do that, I'm just going to move my appearance palette back over onto the right. Same with my symbols palette. He can go over there as well. And what I'll do is I will start with a simple path. Now, I'm not going to use my closed shapes. I want to use an open shape. So maybe what I'll do is I'll grab my pencil tool, for example, and I'll just draw some kind of an open path, maybe like a backward C like that. And then make sure that you have a stroke color on this guy as well. So you might want to go over to your color palette, for example, and choose a stroke color of your liking. I'll grab my black arrow tool and I'll head up to my effect menu, down to 3D, and this time across to Revolve. Now I get a similar dialog box that I had with my Extrude and Bevel, except my 3D Revolve gives me a completely different effect. I'll turn on my preview here and you can see what I'm going to get. Look at that, I just created a piece of hard candy there. Just from that one backwards C there. So what's happening is it's getting repeated an infinite number of times all the way around and then back to where it started. That's what they mean by Revolve. So, just like before, I can drag on my cube and look at that. Couldn't you play with that all day just by looking at that and playing with it and rotating it around? I know I could. I'd never get bored of that. Look at the bottom there. It's pretty neat. Pretty cool stuff. So, back on a serious note here, you can obviously use your cube here to move them around. You can use your X, Y, and Z values here as well. We also have our perspective value if you want to throw some perspective onto your guy. Look at that. Isn't that wild? It reminds me of like something you'd see on like a rave poster or a, you know, something like that. But anyway, I digress. You can play around with that. Now, here's where things get cool. If they're not cool already, I have my angle here so I can decide how far around do I want this revolve to go. So now I get this sort of hollow shape here happening. Isn't that wild? And I can keep going around and around depending on how much or how little of this shape I want. And don't forget, it all started with a goofy little backward C that I drew with my pencil tool. So, you can use your angle if you like. I'll wrap this guy right back around. Something like that. I'm going to leave a little slice out of it here. And now I can come down and use my offset option, which gives me this kind of an effect. Look at that. Isn't that wild? So in other words, it's offsetting it from my original path this number of points. Now mine's super huge here. There's 150 points between the original starting path and my new object here. Maybe I'll knock this down to something a little bit more reasonable here. Something like that, or maybe 100. And I can go from left edge, from right edge. I can get all kinds of different weird and wild effects happening here. It's pretty awesome stuff. Just like we had before, we have a more options button and you can come in here and adjust your lighting if you want. Decide how you want this thing to be lit. Look at that. Isn't that wild? Pretty awesome. Hope you're enjoying this. I get a huge kick out of playing around with this. And by the way, I'm really just sort of fiddling around with the options, not actually throwing in any preset values that I had set up before we had done our recording here. Anyway, I'll go back to fewer options here. I'll click on OK. And there's my object. Here's where it's wild once again. This is what I see. We already know what Illustrator is going to see. My original backwards C. It's pretty wild and crazy. So you can play around with that. Where would you actually use this? Well, I will leave that up to your imagination. But you can start experimenting with different types of objects and different types of shapes. Maybe I'll do something like this. I'll just do this fairly quickly. Maybe I'll have a series of rectangles here, something like this. I'll grab them all here, and I'll make sure that they're all lined up horizontally within one another. And then what I'll do is I'll weld them all together using my Pathfinder. Now, my Pathfinder palette has been buried under here. There it is. Go and pull that over from the side. I'll weld everything together and expand it. So now I have this sort of an effect happening. And I'm going to take this path here. I'll press my A key to get my white arrow tool and single click that path and delete it. So now I have an open shape. Go back to my black arrow tool. And now I want to put a revolve on this weird wacky shape here that I've created. And I just shrunk it down just a little bit there. I'll go back up to effect, down to 3D, across to revolve, turn on my preview, 
and be mesmerized. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? So again, it's taking that original path and just revolving it or copying it an infinite number of times all the way around and back to the starting point. And this, to me, looks like some kind of a an aircraft engine part or something weird and wacky like that. But anyway, you can fiddle and play and goof around as much as you want to get the effect that you're after. I'll throw in some perspective, and you can keep fiddling around. I'm going to hit OK and accept my changes. And there's my revolve effect. 